The reputation of the IEC has been fantastic with a great degree of autonomy perceived, perhaps real autonomy from the state, a resisting state intervention and in some instances that we are aware of, and doing everything in their power to get things up and running and professionally implemented and with a series of continuous improvements, for example, on the side of where voting stations would be, those logistical side, and also in accounting and security aspects, we have seen continuous improvements there. We've also seen great practice when it came to the IEC's engagement with political parties. That is a party liaison committees, and they were bringing parties together involving parties in conflict resolution mechanisms have really set some benchmarks for electoral practice in other settings. I am tempted uh, to say something about Section 24A, Susan, though I, it was not in our notes. Some people might not know what it is, except those who read strictly. It means uh, making it possible for a person who does not reside in that particular province or in that particular ward or municipality to vote for the presidential elections. And why we got into trouble this time, Susan, is that the parties suddenly discovered this and they were bussing people around uh, because they were more interested in the presidential elections that uh, you get. The, and so they started to move people around. What we do when we have elections, we, by law we have a limited number of uh, voting papers that we can actually print. You don't just print any number you want because they have to be controlled. We're allowed a certain percentage in case of a crisis, which we had because we had a feeling that we were likely to lose uh, the case in the Constitutional Court on overseas. It was clear that we stood no chance on the overseas voting. So we did put the increase on that, even before we went to court, because we had to make the decisions of printing the ballot papers. But what happened was that in some voting stations, we don't have experienced staff, which is one of the areas I'm talking about now, as Susan has, which is a challenge for the future.